Welcome back to the online Bible study of East Whittier Friends Church. The video is going to be a little different this week. I think it's going to be a little shorter, and I'm filming here from my office instead of at home. But uh, I wanted to take some time, even though it's not a lot of time, to talk about this week's episode of AD, which is the, the new TV show on NBC that we've been running this series around. And this week, I think that they're going to be doing Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. But I'm not totally sure because I haven't seen the episode yet. I'm filming this before it's aired. Now, if you grew up in Sunday school, you probably remember the story of Paul's conversion. Paul gets permission from the high priest to go track down all the Jews in Damascus who are following the way of Jesus. But on the road to Damascus, he has a vision of Jesus who confronts him. After that miraculous event, he's blinded and he fasts and and prays for a few days until God sends Ananias to come and lay hands on Paul. Um, And Paul, at this point, is going by his Jewish name, Saul. After that, God heals Paul. And Paul kind of follows the Lord ever after. It's this really fun miracle story about a guy who's persecuting the church but is instantly transformed after this encounter with Jesus. After this encounter, he becomes one of the church's greatest supporters. In fact, one of the early church fathers, the foundation upon which, you know, this 2,000 year tradition is going to come. And we expect it to be more than 2,000 years, right? But I think we often take this story too far. We really make it the model for how we do discipleship. If we give a five minute presentation, we expect people to give their lives to Jesus and never look back. And sometimes the Holy Spirit really uses this approach in people's lives. Sometimes it really works. Their lives are changed. But this isn't the only way that God brings people to Jesus in the Bible. In fact, it's not even the main way that God brings people to Jesus. Think about the 12. Jesus picks them out. They decide to follow Jesus with mixed motives and make some pretty misguided attempts at understanding what Jesus is doing. They follow Jesus and learn from Jesus for a long time, probably one to three years. And it's not even until about halfway through that period that Peter becomes the first person to say, Oh my goodness, Jesus, you're the son of God. And even though Peter doesn't understand what kind of kingdom Jesus is going to bring, he continues to follow. It's years later... When Peter, supposedly at this point, having given, been given all the instruction that he needs, finally goes with Jesus into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray before he's taken by um, the temple guards. When the temple guards come, he lashes out violently and cuts off the guard's ear. Even then, even at the end of this course curriculum, Peter doesn't get it. Even after three years, Peter hasn't really come to Christ, hasn't really been enveloped in the kingdom. And you can say that for all of the twelve. They don't understand what it is that they're coming on to, what they're signing on to, until after Jesus goes back into heaven. So for the twelve, coming to Christ is a long process. There is a moment where they decide that they're going to follow Christ in the beginning. But it's years before they figure out what that means. I think in the same way, we often try to get people to be like Paul. We want people to come to Christ immediately and have that be it. You know, as soon as you come to Christ, your discipleship is pretty much done. He can lead you from here on out. Maybe we should really pay attention to the discipleship model that Jesus uses with Peter. We need to be patient with people as they fail and understand how to incorporate the gospel into their lives. Well... What do you guys think? Um, How did you come to know the Lord? 
Was it a powerful moment of conversion where you knew that Jesus was real and was calling you? Or was it a story more like Peter's where it took years for you to figure out that the kingdom of God was real and what it meant for you to live in the kingdom? How should this affect the way that we make disciples at East Whittier Friends Church? How should it affect the way that we make disciples as an evangelical American church at large? Anyway, I'm really looking forward to your comments and friends, let's get this discussion going.